That was just like taking candy from a baby played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we bring you our modest, unassuming master of ceremonies, a man who is never too busy to say hello. Hello. Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was a very sweet introduction. Never too busy to say hello, but I really don't deserve it. Oh, yes, you do, Jack. Do I? Why, certainly. <laughs> Whether it's the humble newsboy on the corner or a taxi driver or an urchin with a shoeshine box, Jack Benny always stops, and a smile steals across his face as he says, Hiya, pal. How are things going? Oh, pardon me, Don, I, <laughs> I was carried away. <laughs> But let me ask you something, Don. Why shouldn't I go out of my way to be courteous and friendly? We're all human beings. We're all people. Say, after all, what am I? You know what I said at rehearsal? (laughs) Bill, I'm not talking to you. Anyway, Don, I'm just the down-to-earth type that gets along with everybody. You know the little old lady that sells flowers right outside the studio? You mean the one on the corner here? Yeah. See, I've stopped and talked to her now every Sunday for three years. Hello, little lady, I say. And she says, I told you a thousand times I'm not going out with you. (laughs) Phil, if you can't be sentimental, stay out of this. You know, Don, whenever I pass this little flower lady, a tear comes to my eye. And I can't help but think that she's somebody's mother. Yes, and perhaps that somebody could well afford to take care of her. You're probably right, Don. See, I wonder whose mother she is, anyway. She's mine. Now cut that out! (laughs) You're lying, Phil, because I happen to know that your mother is Cigarette Girl at the Wiltshire (laughs) Bowl. Cigars, cigarettes, and homemade jelly. (laughs) So pipe down. Well, you wouldn't get away with this mushy stuff if Mary was here. Oh, yes, I would. By the way, Jack, how is Mary? Is she feeling better? Well, she had a pretty bad cold, Don, but she's much improved. Uh, she'll be with us next Sunday. Oh, that's good. Yeah, glad the kid's feeling better. Thanks. Of course, it'll be kind of tough doing comedy tonight without her. Don't worry, Jackson. I'm here, ain't I? I can get them belly laughs. <laughs> well, just be grateful, Phil, that you get good lines. It ain't the material, Jackson. It's my personality. It's how I stock it over. Oh, brother. <laughs> Phil! Phil, you really think you're the funniest guy in the whole world, don't you? What a spot. If I say yes, I'm a ham. If I say no, I'm a liar. <laughs> You're both, if I ever saw one. <laughs> Say, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. Uh, how would you like a great big part tonight with funny gags and everything? Oh, boy, that'll be swell. All right, you can read Mary's lines. Tonight, you're going to be the girl on the program. Nothing doing. I'm no sissy. Dennis, the program is written, and you've got to take Mary's place. You're the only one in the show with a high voice. Who, me? <laughs> Dennis, now remember, you're married, so go outside and come back when you're supposed to. Okay, but I'll be chewing tobacco. You better not. (laughs) That kid's getting too smart. Well, look, Jackson, why don't you let me play Mary's part? I got beautiful hair and rosy cheeks. Oh, fine, he's got a few broken veins there, and he calls it rosy (laughs) cheeks. We'll manage without you, Phyllis. (laughs) Well, let's, um... Now let's get on with the show. Uh, say, Don, uh, Mary seems to be a little bit late today. I wonder where she is. Mary? I saw her out in the hall just a few minutes ago. Oh, you know, Don, she's so excited. She's been shopping all week, and she's... Oh, here she comes now. Hello, Mary. I said, hello, Mary. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> she looks cute in that fall outfit. That's a new dress, isn't it? Yeah, I got it, Magnus. Isn't it a dream? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. But it's cut a little low there in front, isn't it? On me, it don't make any difference. (laughs) Dennis. Dennis, read the lines that are in the script. Well, you're not going to make a monkey out of me. I'm not trying to make a monkey out of you, Dennis. It's just an emergency. You don't want to read Mary's lines? All right. Well, I don't. All right. Just puts us in a spot, that's all. It's a fine program without a girl on it. See, there must be some way to work this out. I wonder who we can get. I'll help you, kid. Well. I am the Blue Fairy. (laughs) 
Well, that's a very sweet offer, Blue Fairy, but I'm afraid you won't do. You're too fat for Miss Livingston. Oh. Well, if John Wilson ever gets sick, let me know. We will. <laughs> we will. And now I will fly away, back to my home in the clouds. Goodbye. Goodbye. Give me a push, will you? <laughs> okay. Gee, look at her go. Out the window. Over Vine Street. Over Beverly Boulevard. Over the La Brea Pit. <laughs> Play, Phil, and get us out of this fantastic mood. <laughs> Uh, that's for me, played by Phil Harris and his Waldorf Astoria Ensemble. A Waldorf Astoria meaning they couldn't get in there if they were delivering the meat. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. After that violin solo you played with us a couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't say anything derogatory about my band. Derogatory? <laughs> well, I'll be... What's the matter? Ain't it right? Sure it's right. But, Phil, where'd you ever learn the word derogatory? Oh, I forgot to tell you. You know, I don't start working at the vault until 9 o'clock, so I've been going to night school. Oh, well, did you hear that, Don? Uh, Phil goes to night school. Well, congratulations, Phil. How are you getting along? Very good, very good, so you guys don't have to get derogatory. <laughs> all right, we heard that already. What else did you learn? Oh, plenty of stuff. Come on, ask me something. Ask me anything. Oh, quiet. Come on, ask me who invented the cotton gym. All right, Phil. Who invented the cotton gin? Eli Whitney. Well. And with the steamboat, it was Fulton. Why, Phil, you're terrific. Hey, Don, here's another one. What does 1492 mean to you? I don't know, Phil. What does it mean to you? Columbus. <laughs> Gee whiz. You know, the world is round, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I've heard everything. Congratulations, Phil. And now, ladies and gentlemen... The Mississippi is the longest river in the USA. <laughs> Phil, will you stop showing off? I knew about the Mississippi when I was in the fifth grade. Well, I'm only in the third, so I got you beat. <laughs> All right, you got me beat. Hey, Don, ask now... me something. Uh, Don, ask me something about the Revolutionary War. Like, uh, well, when was it or something? Phil, please. All right, uh, Phil, when was the Revolutionary War? 1776. Well, I'll be darned. Not bad, eh? That's very good, Phil. Now, who won the Revolutionary War? That's coming up Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you can hardly wait. <laughs> now, look, Phil, we're all very happy to know that you're trying to improve what mentality you have. But there are more important things to talk about, aren't there, Don? Yes, there are, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, night school is one of the greatest institutions that flourish in this country today. Why? It gives thousands of people the opportunity to improve themselves in the field of education. What's that for? So, if you're one of the many who attend night school, instead of bringing an apple to the teacher, why not bring her a package of tempting and appetizing jello? Well, it's about time. It is not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. So look for the big red letters on the box. They spell jello. And I'm just the guy that can spell it. J-E-L-L-O. Phil, you're positively br brilliant. If you weren't such a bum, you could become president. B-U-M, bum. <laughs> Phil! And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from night school to our feature yeah. attraction of the evening, uh, this being the height of the football season, tonight we are going to offer our annual gridiron classic entitled, Hold That Line. Or, one moment, please. <laughs> Now, once again, I will play the part of Coach Flash Benny of Flatfoot College. Now, Phil, you, Don, and Dennis will be the players, and your orchestra boys can be the cheering section. Well, why don't you use some of my boys on the team? They're all athletes. Phil, shooting pool and pulling court <laughs> are not considered American sports. <laughs> They'll stay in the cheering section. Wait till you hear their cheers. 
Phil, if I hear one bird that isn't a swallow returning to Capistrano, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, we're still short of actors, so I sent for Rochester. Where is he? There he is, Jack, talking to Dennis Day. Oh, that's right. Hey, Rochester. Yes, please? Mm. <laughs> Now, Rochester, we're short of actors tonight, so I want you to play a part in our football sketch. Okay, give me the ball. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to play on the team. You're going to be the water boy. That's a little bit derogatory, ain't it? <laughs> Don't argue. Here's your bucket. You've got a very important part. Important? Yes. Boss, the only man that ever got famous with a bucket was old man Moe. <laughs> Never mind. And he had to kick it. <laughs> now, Rochester, look at it this way. Who's one of the most valuable members of a football squad? Now, water boy. Uh-huh. Whenever a player is injured, who rushes out with a cold drink for him? Now, water boy. Uh-huh. And whenever a sensational play is made and the crowd stands up and cheers, who are they cheering? Okay, give me the bucket. <laughs> Now that we're all set, ladies and gentlemen, this play will go on immediately after a song by Dennis Day. What's it going to be, Dennis? Well, Mr. Benny, this being Navy Day, I'm going to sing a special arrangement of a brand new number called He's My Uncle. Well, go ahead. Hey, Jackson, I just thought of something. We still haven't got enough actors for a football team. Gee, that's right. Well, we'll just have to get along, Phil. What else can we do? I'm available, kid. <laughs> now, look, Blue Fairy, I'm afraid you can't help us. All right, then I'll fly away. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, there she goes. Out the window. Back to the fleecy clouds. Back to the sky of gossamer blue. Back to the Plaza Hotel. <laughs> Sing, Dennis. Very good. That was He's My Uncle, written by Lou Pollock and sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was a swell number. I like the thought of it. Me too. There's nothing like a patriotic song. Yes, sir. Hey, Jackson, you know who made the first American flag? Betsy Ross. <laughs> I know, Phil. With a steamboat, it was Fulton. All right, you told us that. Sit down, genius. Okay. Hmm. Betsy Ross made the first American flag. It certainly is a secret. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our rough and tumble football play entitled Kicked in the Bridgework or I'll Never Smile Again. <laughs> the scene is Flatfoot College located in the thriving little town of Puerile, Indiana, which is just three miles north of Bano. The first half has just ended in the annual game with Meatball Tech. As the curtain rises, Coach Flash Benny is giving his team a pep talk in the locker room. Curtain. Music. Now, listen, men. We're in a tough spot. The last half is about to start, and we're behind 98 to 7. <laughs> but we still got a chance to beat them. The game isn't over yet. Let's hear some of that flatfoot spirit. That's the stuff. <laughs> Now, I want you to go in there this last half and fight. You understand? Fight. What are we, men or mice? Give me a tail and call me Mickey. <laughs> I'll give you a Mickey. <laughs> now, listen, men. In the first half, Meatball had things their own way. But in this next half, Flatfoot's going to walk all over Meatball. Sounds messy, doesn't it? <laughs> and you, Harris, you're supposed to be a football player and all American. Why, during the first quarter, you played like a dope. D-O-P, dope. <laughs> you spelled dope, dope. <laughs> and you, Wilson, you're as bad as the rest of these lugs. Why, what are you talking about, Coach? I recovered five times on fumbles. Yeah, but every time you fell on the ball, we had to get a new one. <laughs> now, take it easy. Okay. Pass the fudge, Phil. <laughs> Lay off the candy, Wilson. Your stomach is over the goal line when you still have five yards to go. <laughs> now, put down that fudge. A little fudge won't hurt. 
Oh, oh, so you're butting in, you imbecile. The way you play football. Now, coach. You run around like a chicken with your head cut off. Now, coach. Every time you got the ball, you ran the wrong way. Well, turn my head around and let's get going. <laughs> get out of here. Hmm. Now, listen, man. In this next half, I want you all to... Hey, water boy, what are you putting in that bucket? A little lemon juice, that's all. Lemon juice, eh? Lemon juice in the water. Yeah, that goes with the sugar. Oh, lemon juice and sugar. Hmm? I suppose that's lemonade. Lemonade, that's it. I see. You didn't put anything else in the bucket, did you? No, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, let me have a glass of that lemonade. Don't take more than one. <laughs> I thought so. Lemon juice, sugar, cracked eye. Rochester, are you mixing Tom Collins's in that bucket? You need pancake batter. <laughs> well, throw it away. Pour it out the window. Okay, that grass is sure going to grow out there. <laughs> Never mind about the grass. Now, men, it's almost time for the second half, and we're going to win. You can count on us, coach. I'm not counting on any one of you. I got a new player coming into the game, and he'll show you what football really is. I've heard a lot about this boy, and they tell me he's a sensation. A new player, huh? Yeah. Come on in, Butch. Hello, Swenson. Yeah. Well, so you're the sensation, eh? That's me, Butch Slipperman, the beast of Boyle Heights. <laughs> Good. Now, we're depending on you, Schlepp. Do you think you can win for us? What is the score now? 98 to 7. Uh, who's got the 7? We have. What do you say, Schlepp? You're lucky you can keep that. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We're depending on you to come through, so don't be so pessimistic. Be cheerful. Be happy. 98 to 7, and he wants smiling Frankie Gordon. <laughs> Never mind. Just get in there and fight, that's all. What position do you play? I'm a tailor. All right, you can be left Taylor. Now, come on, men. I'm going to play in the game myself this last half. And Flatfoot is going to win, or my name ain't. All right, folks, the second half of this thrilling gridiron duel is about to begin. The score is Flatfoot 7, Meatball 132. 132? Why, the rat they've been playing during intermission. <laughs> Come on, man, we'll show them. Meatball is already on the field, and here comes Flash Benny and his Flatfoot team. Hi, Apple. <laughs> Flash Benny is going into the game himself. What an ovation he gets from the Flatfoot cheering section. He's never too busy to say hello, to say hello, to say hello. He's never too busy to say hello. Go, 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 go. go. Ah! Folks, what a crowd is gathered here today. There's a whistle. They're lining up, and Meatball is about to kick off the flat foot. There's the kick. It's a beauty. The ball is coming down on the 15-yard line. There goes Harris for it. No, he's headed for the water bucket. What a business Rochester is doing. I told him to pour that out. What's this? But Slepperman, the sensational new player, gets the ball. He's hit hard, and the ball is on Flatfoot's own ten-yard line. Slepperman. Slepperman, are you hurt? Slep. Slep, say something. With the steamboat, it was Fulton. <laughs> He's delirious. Oh. Slepperman was knocked out on the first play, and they're carrying him off the field. But that boy is a sensation. Sensation why he was knocked out in the first play. He's alive, ain't he? Never mind. <laughs> All right, men. We've only got 90 yards to go. I'll carry the ball around left end. Why don't you run around my end, Flash? I did that in the last game and wound up in Laguna. <laughs> now, come on. Signal. 72. 23. Hey! Ooh. The ball is left to Flash Benny. And there he goes! Look at that boy run! Look at him go! No wonder they call him Flash! They finally tackle him, folks, and he's down! Then he lost eight yards on that play! Darn it. Well, men, I'm afraid it's hopeless. 
98 yards to go, and we can't gain an inch. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> well, here she is again. <laughs> Let me carry the ball, kid. You? Listen, Blue Fairy. Football is a man's game. And those guys will kick you all over the field. Well, at my age, I can't be choosing. <laughs> all right, then. You take Dennis A's play. Come on, fellas. Line up. That foot is lining up, folks. But there's been a substitution. Dennis Day has been replaced by the Goodyear Blimp. <laughs> That's the Blue Fairy. Well, how can I tell from here? All right. All right, Blue Fairy. I'll take the ball and ladder it. The rest is up to you. Don't worry. I'll beat him, Daddy. Eight to the bar. Good. Signal. 33. 45. Hey. <laughs> then he receives the ball. He laterals to the Blue Fairy. And she takes off. Ladies and gentlemen, is the month of apples. Wine sap, Pittsburgh, Baldwin's, Macintosh, and all the rest of those ruddy cheek favorites. And just to celebrate the occasion, here we come with a grand jello and apple dessert. It's really something special, a swell autumn day treat, and you can have it all ready and on the table in no time at all. Simply make up a package of lemon jello according to the directions on the box. Chill until slightly thickened and fold in one medium red apple cubed. Then mold and serve as a bright, tangy dessert or salad. The tempting flavor of this delicious combination is something you just have to taste yourself to appreciate. So tomorrow for dinner, enjoy this mellow October dessert, crisp, juicy apples embedded in a glistening mold of rich, golden lemon jello. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better, Mary. Say, did you hear the program? Uh-huh. Well, how'd you like our football sketch? Yes. Mm-hmm. I see. Oh, well, you've got a cold. Good night, doll. So long, folks. J-E-L-L. -L.